Good afternoon. It's the end of a long day. Who here has enjoyed the Web AI Summit so far? <laughs> Woohoo! I want to end the block of presentations with my talk, Built in AI in the Wild, a Mastodon translation success story. So let's start. Hello, my name is Thomas Steiner, and I have a weird hobby. I love finding the German word for dot, dot, dot. So let me give you an example. This is a Mastodon post by a Ukrainian musician called Cat Lady Kidia Music. Posts on Mastodon are called toots. And so in this toot, Cat Lady asks, what's the German word for when you wave at someone, but the someone wasn't waving at you? <laughs> so <laughs> what's the German word for the situation? Any takers? Well, of course, in German, <laughs> we call it Fremdwink, Zurückwinkungspeinlichkeit. Fremdwink, Zurückwinkungspeinlichkeit. You don't believe me? Here's a screenshot of Google Translate. And I had to nudge it just a little bit in the right direction by adding a dash. But here's the translation. Fremdwink, Zurückwinkungspeinlichkeit, embarrassment of waving back at someone else. By default, I use Mastodon with the English user interface. Watch me type as a reply to <coughs> sorry. Watch me type as a reply to the toot. So let me zoom in a bit so you can better understand what's happening. Notice how after typing 22 characters, the language selector lights up in yellow. This indicates that the Mastodon software has detected that likely what I'm typing isn't English. <laughs> it's very much not English, which is the default post language when you have the user interface in English. Many people on Mastodon don't even realize that this language selector exists. The result is that many created toots with the wrong language. When I inspect my toot with DevTools, you can see that the language of the toot is English. So luckily on Mastodon, there's a way out. You can edit toot so you can go back to the toot and correct the language to German. And when you do that and inspect with left tools again, you can then see that the language is now correctly set to German. And because I have my Mastodon user interface set to English, the software now also shows me a translate button on all non-English toots, including my own. But what happens when I click it? When I click the Translate button, the Mastodon software makes a request to a translation API that is running on the server. You can see the translation result in the UI now. The API responds with foreign waving back embarrassment. It's like, uh, somewhat correct. In this case, the response comes from deeple.com. And while Deeple offers a free tier, which is what I'm using on my single user demo Mastodon instance here, um, you can imagine that larger Mastodon instances with hundreds or even thousands of users would quickly burn through the free, free tier quota, which yeah, is, of course, then causing them hefty API costs that typically um, in a community kind of supported yeah, world, um, those community Mastodon server admins are not really super happy to um, yeah, host and pay for. So let's recap the two challenges here that um, we have. Language detection exists, but kicks in kind of late, and the UI change is relatively subtle. And so many tools end up being mislabeled with the wrong language. And then second, translation happens on the server, which can become really expensive, and which also means you can't really translate private tools like DMs, without sending the data off to a remote server. I decided to tackle those challenges on a Mastodon client called Elk. You can find Elk at the URL elk.zone. It's completely open source, and it's available on GitHub. With more than 600 forks and almost 6,000 stars, it's also a quite popular project. Elk is a progressive web app, a PWA, written in Vue. 
Having to detect the language of unknown texts is a common task. task. It's actually such a common task that on the Chrome team, we have decided to make language detection what Kenji earlier today called a well-paved road. The API is so simple that I can demo it with two lines of JavaScript in the Chrome DevTools. I first create the language detector and then run the language detector's detect function, which returns an array of possible language candidates with their confidence. And now that you know how the API works, let me show you the PR that I opened to add support for language detection. This is what I wrote. This PR adds support for automatically detecting the composition language based on the language detector API. The detected language is updated as the user types. And the more text, I went with a minimum number of six graphemes, the more reliable the detection. This should greatly improve the lives of people who compose tools in different languages, like many uh, people do, and always forget to update the language picker. On browsers that don't support the API, simply nothing happens. The code consists of about 40 lines of view code. First, there's the API setup and feature detection. And next, I do letter counting, or rather grapheme counting. So language detection only starts working when there's at least five graphemes. A grapheme is um, the smallest functional unit of a writing system. The actual imp implementation then just hooks up the API to the view frontend code, so the language selector in Elk automatically changes when the detected language changes. My initial implementation had one small um, yeah, flaw. You can see on this slide where I hook up the detected language function to the key up event. The problem, was, of course, is the bubble that I live in. More specifically, it's the laptop with the apple with a byte taken out of it that I coded the extension or the, the, uh, the API on. Elk is a PWA that aims to be accessible to all sorts of hardware. From the highest end, which my work, la work laptop is part of, to the lowest end, which means, for example, that um, 11 years old Windows laptop that um, my neighbor keeps uh, sticking onto. The Elk community was quick to file a follow-up PR that fixed my initial flaw by uh, adding language detection with uh, low-level debouncing. So it would not always run on key up, but be debounced. Um, Alec even has a setting to optimize the app for low performance devices. So when this preference is set, um, language detection is turned off. Like, it's like really for low end devices. And for all other situations, the follow up PR just wrapped my code in a debounce function. One challenge down, one to go. Next, I tackle translation. The translator API is likewise a paved road. And the road is so well paved that I can demonstrate the API in DevTools again. I first create a translator by calling the create function, passing it the source language, German, and the target language, English. Here I'm translating from German to English. And next, all that remains is calling the translate function. Good morning in German means good morning in English. So here's my PR, which I added support for the translator API to Elk. Elk doesn't use the original Mastodon software's translation stack, but their own infrastructure powered by an open source translation library called Libre Translate. While there's no API quota cost to pay, there's still server maintenance cost and just operation cost that they need to pay. The implementation consists first of feature detection to add the translator API as a progressive enhancement. The actual implementation then is relatively straightforward. It mostly just hooks up the view frontend code to the translation logic. An interesting detail is that I chose to add language detection before the translation step is run. Because as you may remember, uh, many tools are mislabeled using the wrong language. So by using language detection, I catch those cases. Both PRs were merged a while ago. And while the last core release of Elk from January doesn't include the changes yet, um, you can always switch to the I'm feeling lucky um, release at main.elk.zone that's always deployed straight from the main branch. All right, with that, thank you very much for, oh, wait, 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 wait. there's one more thing. On the Chrome team, we are also experimenting with the Freeform Prompt API. It's a paved road again from an API point of view. 
But the challenge is knowing where the road goes. Purely for the fun of it, I played with the prompt API in the context of my weird hobby. First, I created a session with the language model, telling it about the expected inputs and outputs, which are both of type text and the languages are set to English. I don't set the output to German because the language model, while capable and knowledgeable of German, isn't approved for German yet for security reasons. But now with uh, the session created, I can finally ask the model, what is the German word for when you wave back at someone who wasn't waving at you? And you can see that I use some prompt engineering here to nudge the model in the right direction. Respond with just one word. It can be absurdly long and ridiculous. No dashes, so the model was first adding dashes. The idea is to make fun of long German compound words. Well, I'm biased, but I'd say my response was better. Übermäßiges Händewinken zurückwenden doesn't quite pass for what's the German word for joke. And maybe that's the important message to take home here. Let's totally use artificial intelligence for what it's good at. But also, let's not forget to use human intelligence for, well, the human touch. I encourage you to learn more about built-in AI on developer.chrome.com slash docs slash AI slash built-in. And be sure to also sign up to our early pre preview program so you hear first when we release new APIs or features. And with that, now it's really time to say thank you for listening. My name is Thomas Steiner. And if you ever need the German word for something, <laughs> be sure to reach out. Thank you very much. Thank you.